हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम रजत अब रॉय फ्रॉम विजन मेडिकेयर न्यू डेली टुडे वी विल डिस्कस मॉड्यूल कैप्स्यूल पार्ट टू हार्ट कैप्स्यूल्स अंडर पेपर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट पार्ट वन इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी लर्न अबाउट वन हार्ट कैप्स्यूल सेल एंड इट्स एडवांटेजेस ओवर द सॉलिड ओरल्स टू डेवलपमेंट फॉर्मुलेशन कंपोनेंट्स एंड फिलिंग ऑफ हार्ट कैप्स्यूल्स थर्ड evaluation and quality control of heart capsules fourth innovations and specialized heart capsules for drug delivery we will start with introduction the word capsule is derived from the latin word capsula which means a small box or container capsule has been the primary use to describe a solid oral dose from which consist of a tasteless container filled with a medicinal substance as discussed in the previous module capsule dosage form is classified either soft or hard depending on the nature of the shell hard capsules consist of two separate parts semi closed cylindrical in shape called as cap and body cap is shorter and have a slightly larger diameter than the body such that it fits closely over the body to form a sealed unit with the advent of modern capsule filling machines which produce up to 2 lakh capsules an hour and can fill variety of products in a single operation and because the hard capsules provide the advantages of elegance portability ease of use and tasteless shell of drugs the use of hard capsules as oral dosage form has grown over the years in 1980s only 17.5% of newly licensed products were presented as hard capsules which by 2010s had already reached 45% approximately tenfold that of soft capsules some of the advantages of hard shell capsules as dosage forms include the overall production cost of hard capsules including cost coming from research and development process equipment gmp space required total production time in process controls analytical cleaning and validation is low as compared to other solid orals hard shell capsules often have been assumed to have better bioavailability than tablets this assumption is derived from the fact that the gelatin shell rapidly dissolves at body temperature affording drug release hard shell capsules allow more flexibility of formulation not attainable with tablets hard capsules can be filled with formulation that has a wide range of physical properties thus enabling the formulator to use many different types of excipients to achieve their desired effect the release characteristics rapid controlled or modified of the capsules could be controlled efficiently because of the limited number of factors involved hard capsules are easier to formulate because there is no requirement that the powders be formed into a coherent compact that will stand up to handling next modern capsule filling machines makes possible the multiple filling of diverse systems such as powder granules beads small tablets and even semi solids and liquids capsule makes possible the filling of modified release microspheres which is not possible in tablets since tablets uses compression forces which may damage the particle or its coating from manufacturing view point hard capsules poses some disadvantages the output of automatic capsule filling machine is about 5 fold less than the high speed tablet press further capsules are not usually used for the administration of effervescent or deliquescent materials since effervescent materials may cause the capsule to soften whereas deliquescent material may dry the capsule shell to excessive brittleness Also hard capsules are not used for extremely soluble materials such as potassium chloride or ammonium chloride since the sudden release of such compounds in the stomach could result in gastric irritation nevertheless the simplicity of hard capsule formulation as well as the versatility of its dosage form substantially supports the requirement of a consistency of product quality acceptable on a worldwide scale recently new materials such as starch hpmc and pulvan been explored as raw material for manufacturing of capsule shells however gelatin remains the raw material for production of capsule shell production of hard capsule dosage form 
compared to other solid dosage forms capsule production require relatively few manufacturing process steps and excipients capsule production does not require expensive and time consuming operations like repeated mixing granulation sewage and compression as required for development of a tablet dosage form the comparative table showing process involved in the development of tablet and hard capsule dosage form is shown in the table to refer the table if you see in the case of tablets you require weighing preparing ingredients mixing granulating drying sieving addition of lubricants compression and packing but in case of capsules we require weighing preparing ingredients mixing filling into capsules and packing it can therefore be assumed that in a large number of cases production cost for hard capsules are the same as or even less than that of tableting the process and steps involved in the production of hard capsules are detailed below which we will discuss the first is manufacturing of capsule shell in the production of hard capsule dosage form the first step is manufacturing of empty capsule shells most of the automatic machine used for capsule production follows mechanisms for automatically dipping spinning drying stripping trimming and joining the capsules the first step is dipping usually 150 pairs of stainless steel pins are dipped into gelatin soft solution of carefully controlled viscosity to form caps and body simultaneously thickness of the capsule wall is controlled by the viscosity of the gelatin solution and the speed and the time of dipping the pins are rotated to distribute the gelatin uniformly during which time the gelatin may be set or gelled by a blast of cool air this step is known as spinning once gelatin is set the pins are moved through a series of controlled dry air for gradual and precise removal of water this step is referred to as drying precise control of drying conditions is essential to the ultimate quality of the cast film after this capsule are stripped from the pins by bronze johns and capsules half are being spun and trimmed to length by stationary knives these steps are referred to as stripping and trimming after being trimmed to exact length the cap and the body sections are joined and ejected from the machine the entire cycle of the machine lasts approximately 45 minutes the final dimension of the capsule are dependent on the mold of the pin and the machine control relating to cut lengths the moisture content of the capsule is crucial for mechanical strength of the capsule shell and moisture content from 12 to 15% is considered optimum at moisture content below 10% the capsule becomes brittle and may break during handling or transportation at moisture content above 16% the capsule loses its mechanical strength and becomes soft and tacky in severe cases the capsule may absorb sufficient moisture to cause them to deform under their own weight consideration should be given to storage of empty capsule and is ideally carried in areas with the relative humidity ranging from 30 to 45 degrees since major moisture content changes do not occur with these limits second is filling of capsule shell the mix of active substance with excipients is either directly filled into the capsule or a light pre compression to form a so called plug might be necessary the force used for pre compression is normally between 20 newton to 30 newton far below the usual pressure of tablets which is about 3 into 10 raised to power 4 newtons several type of filling machines are used for filling of hard pieces capsule however most of them have in common the following operations one is rectification which means the empty capsules are oriented on a ring containing separable portions lower portion and upper portion is such a way that all point the same direction that is body point downward rectification is based on dimensional differences between the outside diameters of the cap and the body of the capsule next is separation of cap from the body the vacuum is applied on the ring which seats the bodies into the lower portion of the ring while the caps are retained in the upper portion 
the two portion of the ring are then separated and the upper portion is set aside. Next is dosing of filling material. The lower portion, the ring is placed on a variable speed turntable and is mechanically rotated under the powder hopper. Several methods are employed for filling of materials including auger fill principle, vibrator fill principle and dosator type feeding. Next is replacement of cap and ejection of filled capsule. After the two portions of the ring are rejoined, pins are used to push the filled bodies into the cap for closure and to push the closed capsule out of ring. The hard capsule can be filled with materials that have a wide range of physical properties including solids such as powders, granules, pellets and tablets, semi-solids such as paste, thermosoftening and thixotrophic materials and non and oily liquids. Now we will discuss filling of solids, liquids and semi-solids. We will start with filling of solids. Solid filling machines are differentiated by the means by which they measure and feed the dose of material. The feeding mechanisms commonly employed in filling machines are of two types. A. Dependent type in which powder is transferred from a hopper to the capsule body and flow of the powder is aided either by revolving auger or by a vibrating plate. The powder inside these capsules is a loose fill. From auger machines, higher fill weights are often achievable. B is independent type, in which compress the measured amount of powder to form a plug. The plug is formed inside a dosator or dosing tube with the help of a movable piston that controls the dosing volume. Dosator type feeding units are very versatile because the fill weight can be varied over the wide range. Filling machines are available with a range of outputs from bench scale to high output industrial scale and from manual to semi-automatic to fully automatic. Some popular machines are described in the table along with their feed mechanisms but no attempt is made to compare them because performance of these machines is dependent upon the conditions of the equipment, formulation, method of operation, operator competence and size of capsule. One of the examples to be discussed in this, the manufacturer name is Eli Lilly and Cooperation. The model they are using is Rotofill and the feed mechanism is auger type and the material that they are filling is pellets. The other examples is are Pharmatic, the model number of the machine is 2000 oblique 15, 2000 oblique 30 and 2000 oblique 60 and the feed mechanism is dosator type and they are using powder to fill in. Now we will discuss about filling of liquids and semi-solid. All the major machine manufacturers have made machines can fill capsule with liquids. Filling machines can handle materials with viscosities from 0.1 to 20 Pascal. The uniformity of liquid fill in most cases is better than what is to be achieved normally on a powder filling machine. The output of liquid filling machines is about 50 to 66 percent of the output of the same size powder filling machine. The operational speed of liquid filling machine is slower than powder filling machines since liquid has to pass through a much smaller orifice than that of a powder. If the viscosity of the liquid is low or if the formulation is mobile at ambient temperatures then the capsule will need to be sealed after filling. Third step in the production is formulation components. The capsule seldom consists only the active ingredient and the capsule formulation require the use of diluents, lubricants, glidants, disintegrants and wetting agent. Some of the commonly used excipients in capsule formulations are described in the table which we will discuss. First is diluents. The main purpose that it adds the bulk of the formulation and improve plug formation. Example is lactose. Second is lubricants. It basically improves flow and reduces powder addition to metal parts. The example is steric acid. Third is glidants. It improves powder flow properties. The example is aerosol or talc. Fourth is disintegrants. It ensures disintegration of powder mixture. The example is 
स्टोडियम स्टार्स ग्लाइकोलेट लास्टली द वेटिंग एजेंट्स इट इंप्रूव वॉटर पेनिट्रेशन इन टू पाउडर मिक्सचर द एग्जाम्पल इज टून एटी सोडियम लोरेल सल्फेट द एक्सीपियंट यूज फॉर कैप्सूल फॉर्मुलेशन आर सेम एज दो यूज फॉर टैबलेट फॉर्मुलेशन एंड हेंस आर नॉट एक्सप्लेन इन डिटेल हेयर हाई एवर फ्यू जनरल कंसिडरेशन आर फॉलोड The powder mix must provide the type of flow characteristics required by the equipment. In the case of powder filling machines, powder must be free flowing. In the case of slug filling machines, the powder must have sufficient cohesiveness to retain its plug from during delivery to the capsules. Next, reactions at elevated temperatures and humidity should be studies for effects not only on the contained powder mixture but also on the gelatin capsules. The choice of excipients should be made with a view towards FDA regulations. First consideration should be given to materials that are given generally recognized as safe designation by the FDA. Now we will discuss the key aspects of formulation components. First is compatibility with gelatin. When starting to formulate a hard gelatin capsule, the first to study its compatibility of formulation component with the gelatin shell incompatibilities are known to occur with substances that contain relative carbonyl groups the carbonyl group of the components can react with the amine group of the gelatin to form cross links gelatin which consists of a mixture of water soluble proteins lysine residue are main responsible for cross linking either with formulation components or with gelatin itself The gelatin cross-linking has shown to reduce the release rate of drugs during in vitro dissolution. However, it bears no relationship with the in vivo dissolution rate, possibly due to presence of enzymes in GIT, which reverse the type of chemical reaction involved. Therefore, USP 24 propose that pepsin and pancreatin can be added in dissolution test aimed at establishing the likely in vivo dissolution properties. only in cases where the enzymes have been added and the test still shows poor dissolution should be a negative effect due to cross linking be assumed next is hygroscopic compounds hygroscopic compounds can have a negative influence on the formulation of hard gelatin capsules if a substance is highly hygroscopic it might absorb water from the capsule shell this process can lead to brittleness of the shell which might break under mechanical strain secondly the absorption of moisture during production can lead to the build up of a sorption film that affects the fluidity of the powder mix filling ideally when water absorption is concerned the hygroscopic compound should be combined with the diluent mannitol next third is the moisture sensitivity of the drug substance it is important to have precise knowledge about the moisture sensitivity of the active drug as there might be implications for the compound stability if the drug substance in the capsule is sensitive to humidity the water content of the shell which is normally between 13 to 16% can lead to the degradation of the drug substances as with hygroscopic substances the addition of mannitol can prevent damage to the substance caused by the humidity of the shell or the environment next is particle shape to achieve content uniformly on filling machines it is vital to have an adequate powder flow flow of blend is mainly dependent on shape and size of the particles as well as on the interparticulate cohesion and surface films asymmetric particles which are in high compact order are usually preferred for filling into hard gelatin capsules and isometric particles such as needle shaped prismatic or plate shaped particles shows peculiar flow and significant difference in the bulk and tap density as they flow not only in the primary direction but also in the secondary direction according to the orientation of the particles in case of such particles grinding or granulation should be considered before filling into the capsule next is the particle size the particle size of the drug active is critically important to homogeneity and fluidity of the powder for the filling of hard gelatin capsules experience suggest a minimum particle size of 10 micrometer by further decreasing the particle size 
the electrostatic charge increases which may lead to the formation of agglomerates and flow problems during the filling process. If the particle size is more than 60 micrometer, the fluidity starts to deteriorate which leads to unwanted deviations of the filling waves. The particle size should be ideally measured between 10 micrometer and 150 micrometer and excipient should be chosen in relation to the particle size of the drug active. Next is adhesion. The tendency towards adhesion of many drugs or excipients lead to difficulties during capsule filling as particles stick to the surface of the filling machine leading to unacceptable fill variations. If the active or excipients have a tendency to adhere, it is recommended to add a glidant or a combination of a glidant and lubricant such as talcum, stearic acid or aerosol or magnetic stearate. Next is wetting properties. The wetting properties of the filling are of critical importance the release of the substance. When using hydrophobic drug substances, especially if they are high dose, an appropriate disinclinant should be added. The strong disinclinant includes cross-care amylose sodium and cross-pyodine, but moderate disintegrants such as cornstarch or sodium starch glycolate may often be sufficient. The release of hydrophobic substances can also be enhanced by the addition of wetting agents such as sodium laurel sulfate. Next is solubility. Solubility of the active drug substance and the excipient is the major contributing factor in disintegration and dissolution. The more water soluble the formulation, the quicker it disintegrates and the release the substance. In the case, the substances which are poorly soluble in water, disintegration and release depend heavily on disintegration and diluents. Next is doses. The dose of the active drug is the main parameter for a formulation. For drug with low doses, homogeneity of the drug within the powder has to be maintained. For doses in excess of 100 mg, the properties of the active are of key importance as the quantity of excipients are minimal. High dose usually lead to difficulties during the filling process which can be prevented by proper selection of diluents and adequate quantity of lubricants. Doses over 1600 mg in powder form are virtually impossible to put into capsules of acceptable size. It has though been possible to produce such doses in hard gelatin capsule formed by increasing the density of the formulation, for instance, by granulation. Granulation usually leads to an improvement of product flow and the dissolution rate due to increased dispersion of the drug in the granules. Fourth step in the production is capsule fill capacity. The choice of an appropriate hard gelatin capsule is mainly on the capsule size. The ones most commonly employed for human beings ranges from size 0, the largest, to size 5, which is the smallest. Size 00 capsules may occasionally be required because of the volume of material to be filled, but the size is not used commercially in large volume. The fill capacity of a hard capsule is dependent upon the physical size of the capsule and the density of the fill material. The fill weight for powders has been calculated by multiplying powder tap density by the capsule volume as provided by the capsule manufacturers. The size and weight of the capsule along with the fill capacity on the density is shown as the table. Please refer to the table. In case of liquids, fill capacity of capsules should not exceed 90% of the capsule body volume so as to prevent spillage of the product. Fifth and the last step in the production is finishing, imprinting and sorting. Capsules obtained from all filling equipments require some sort of dusting or polishing before the remaining operations of inspection, bottling and labeling are completed. Polishing using tap lid coating pan, rubbing with the oil impregnated cloth or brushing are common procedures. These days, finishing is done via use of cleaning and polishing machines. Imprinting is a convenient method by which company and or product identification information can be placed upon each capsule. 
the imprinting operation is best performed on the empty capsules, although filled capsules can be printed. Various types and capacities of equipments are commercially available for this purpose. All imprinting machines operate on a rota grove process and a wide variety of colors of edible inks, both water and solvent based, are commercially available. The damaged capsules, unfilled joint capsules, filled on unfilled bodies and loose caps are removed by mechanical sorting devices. Rotosort is an example of capsule sorting machine sold by Eli Lilly and Company. Also please refer to the picture. It can handle up to 1,50,000 capsules per hour and it can run directly of a filling machine which can be used separately. Now let us discuss evaluation and quality control of hard capsules. Evaluation and quality control should be carried out during all stages of manufacturing and the control procedures must ensure that the finished filled capsules meet the appropriate current regulatory requirements. Quality control tests for capsules are similar to those discussed for tablets and thus are briefly explained here. Evaluation of gelatin As discussed in module capsule part 1, the gelatin should be assayed for physical properties like bloom strength, viscosity and its loss. Chemical tests like purity, microbial properties and limits for heavy metals like arsenic, ash content should be determined. Next is evaluation of empty hard capsules. According to Japanese pharmacopoeia, the test called purity uses 5 capsules which are tested individually. Each of the capsule is placed in a 100 ml conical flask containing 50 ml of water maintained at 37 degrees Celsius. The contents are shaken vigorously and the capsule passes the test if it completely dissolves within 10 minutes giving odorless, neutral or slightly acidic solution. Next is weight variation test. The uniformity of dosage units may be demonstrated by determining weight variation or content uniformity test. For weight variation, 10 intact capsules are individually weighed and the individually net and average weight is determined. The test requirements are met if all the individual weights are within the range of 90 to 110 percentage of the average or if the individual weight of not more than 1 of 10 dosage units is outside the range of 90 to 110 degrees of the average weight but within the range of 75 to 125 percentage of the average. Recently automatic machines such as Rotoway manufactured by Eli Lilly and Vericap 1200 manufactured by Modern Controls are available for determining the weight of individual capsules providing for the automatic rejection of overfilled and underfilled capsules. Next is content uniformity. Hard capsules containing 25 mg or more of the drug contents should meet content uniformity requirements. 10 capsules are assayed according to procedure specified in monograph and requirements are met if 9 of the 10 are within the specified potency range of 85 to 115 percentage and the 10th is not outside 75 to 125 percentage. If more than 1 but less than 3 of the first 10 capsule falls outside the 85 to 115 percentage limits, the remaining 20 are acid. The requirement are met if all 30 capsules are within 75 to 125 percentage of the specified potency range and not less than 27 of the 30 are within the 85 215 percentage range. Lastly, dissolution testing. Dissolution testing of hard capsules are done in apparatus, those used for tablets even though they have very different physical properties. The rotating pedal and basket apparatus are the most frequently prescribed for measuring the dissolution rate of products in hard capsules. Filled capsule contains entrapped air and most formulation will float on water. Devices are required to ensure that they sink and these can influence the results obtained. For the capsules that fail the dissolution test due to cross-linking, two tire dissolution test with use of enzyme pepsin in acidic dissolution medium and enzyme pancreatin 
in alkaline dissolution medium is recommended. Now, let us discuss about specialized capsules. A. Formalin treated capsules. Formalin treatment of the gelatin has been employed to modify and prolong the release of active ingredient from the capsule. Exposure to formalin vapors result in decrease in solubility of the gelatin film owing to cross linkage of the gelatin molecule. Formalin treatment capsule should be utilized to prolong the release of encapsulated drug. B is the coated capsules. Various coatings have been used in an effort to develop delayed release or modify release capsule. Coating with shellac, cellulose acetate phthalate and certain resin. By usual, pan coating techniques result in capsules with delay or prolonged release properties. C is multiple unit capsule. Multiple units are single dosage forms that disintegrate into several parts after ingestion. Hard gelatin capsules are particularly suitable for their development and manufacture. Multiple units might consist of a homogeneous granules or single pellet or a combination of several pellets and granules with various substances and different release characteristics. It is even possible to include a number of dosage forms such as pellets, tablets and capsule with a single formulation. In this way, incompatibilities and interaction between different drug substances in combination products can be prevented. D is liquid filled capsules. Recently there have been a revival of interest in the filling of conventional two pieces gelatin capsules with liquids and semi solids. For liquids, gelatin banding is the most successful method for sealing of capsules. Licaps is a gelatin capsule exclusively designed to optimize liquid filling by a special body designed and the missing air vent to prevent leakage before sealing. E. Clinical trial capsule. Especially for blinding purpose of clinical trials, hard gelatin capsule that are virtually impossible to reopen after filling are required. There is available the DB caps capsule with a cap covering most of the capsule though that only the rounded end of the body is visible which impedes opening. The capsule cannot be reopened once they have been closed. This ensures that the administration of placebo, test drug and reference preparations are of sustained release dose in constantly accurate and cannot be identified by the doctor or the patient. F. Vegetarian capsules. Recently capsules made from plant derived materials such as HPMC, starch and pulalin are available as an alternative to gelatin which is of swine or bovine origin. This eliminates the problem related to religious and vegetarian dietary restrictions. Further, these capsules, particularly those prepared from HPNC, offer advantage of low moisture content, which is between 2 to 5 percentage, chemically inert and stable under very low moisture conditions as compared to the gelatin capsules. Now, to conclude this module, in recent year, interest in using hard capsules as solid oral form has increased considerably. This probably is due to the efficient process machinery and several advantages of hard capsules over other solid orals. Comparing the perception of tablets and capsules, it has been found that 66% of the patient choose capsules. 18% coated tablets and 4% uncoated tablets as easy to swallow. The choice available in terms of capsule type, the range of sizes and the capsule color or combination of colors means that the patient compliance, product recognition and product differentiation can be markedly improved. The formulation of hard capsule can be largely deducted from the physiochemical properties of the drug active. Usually, only a limited number of excipients are necessary and the costly process of granulation and compression can mostly be avoided. Newer machines enable the production of large, 
small or even the minimal quantities that are often needed in community and hospital pharmacies. Multiple units in hard gelatin capsules allow the combination of different products even if they are incompatible with each other or of substances with different release profiles. The latest developments offer new opportunities for filling liquid and semi-solid formulations in hard capsules. Further advantages are improved uniformity of content for low dose products, the avoidance of cross contamination during production and reduced packaging cost due to predefined dimensions of hard capsules. The lustrous appearance, smooth and flexible texture and the taste, the odor masking properties makes a perfect dosage form. Thank you.